Hi, I'm Vic. And I'm Matt. This is another episode of The Armourer's Bench. And what do we have here? Uh, you're going to say it's a brain gun. You're wrong. This is a basil or basil. Um, this was going to be a possible substitute standard during World War II uh, due to the shortage of brain guns after the evacuation of Dunkirk. Uh, after it was developed, it turned out that we could make brain guns quick enough. And of course, the uh, Commonwealth factories in um, Canada were making brain guns as well. So never actually got issued, but we're going to look at it today. Matt. The basil or bessel or bezel, however we want to pronounce it. We think it's beza light and yes, that's how it comes about. And we'll we show you why that, yeah. that comes about. Uh, now, it was developed by BSA, designed by uh, Henry Faulkner. Uh, this is a later model. But we do know that there was a, a Mark I version which had a uh, standard style cocking handle. Uh, this one has a bit of a unique cocking action, doesn't it, Vic? Yeah, this cocks in the same way as the uh, Czechoslovakian uh, ZB37 or the um, British sort of contract manufactured Basa uh, tank machine gun in 792 that was used on a lot of British light tanks, in that the pistol grip is released and move forward which it then grabs the bolt and then when you pull it to the rear it cocks the weapon and locks the bolt sorry the pistol grip to the rear that's now in the cocked and ready to fire position as you can see it takes standard uh, Brengo magazines obviously they were manufactured uh, uh, in great quantities but interestingly enough it and we also, just find this yeah it also takes a anti-aircraft 100 round yeah, they're Motley magazines, I think they were called, weren't they? Yeah, so it takes the uh, anti-aircraft 100-round um, magazines, and I think there was a larger version as yeah, well, a, a, a much deeper one. Mm. So it looks a little bit like a, a Lewis gun, so However, that works. However, there are no provisions for using the sights when this drum mag is in Yeah, place. so I think it's... Uh, uh, like a Bren, the, the sights are offset. Let's just turn it to the side for a second. Yep. That the sights are offset to the left. And what we've got is we've got a two-position adjustable sight. Let's just turn that to the side again so we can get a clear sight. Clear look at that. So we've got a two position adjustable L shape rear sight and a standard um, enclosed front sight. Yeah the um, the barrel originally on the um, Mark 1 was going to use the spare barrel that came with every Bren gun. The plan was to have all of the spare Bren gun barrels that were in service recalled and then placed onto manufactured uh, bezels. This is a later uh, version of the bezel. The first uh, iteration had the cocking handle, as we mentioned before, but there's also versions where it had a skeletonized metal stock instead of having uh, a metal, a metal um, sort of uh, guide and then two wooden panels placed yeah, I'd say, that. without taking this apart, this could well be that it is like a skeletonized, yeah. we we'll say like a Mark II uh, skeleton stock on a, on a Sten gun, so. and then it's had two pieces inlaid in amongst it. So it looks a little bit like a, a, a Lewis gun. After filming, we found a little more information. The concept of a garage gun emerged in late June 1940, and by December 1940, the Chief Superintendent of Design outlined a light machine gun based on the Lewis gun using Lewis gun's rotating locking bolt using Bren gun magazines. However, by early 1941, BSA had been contracted to produce a sample garage gun. The British Ordnance Board cancelled the contract with BSA when they realised it was counterproductive to have an established small arms company build a design to be made in garages and small ad hoc factories. BSA, however, continued to pursue the concept without a contract. Henry Faulkner, BSA's chief designer, developed what would become the first iteration of the Beazle. By late 1941, BSA had the first working prototype. The first pattern used a right side cocking handle, had a skeletonized butt, had a simple fixed peep sight, and the bipod was mounted to the receiver. Testing began in March 1942, and the design was found to be successful enough to continue development. The second pattern prototype had the bipod moved forward in front of the gas system, it had the universal magazine adapter for the brain gun magazine and the pan magazine added, and a full wooden stock was added as well. It had a two position sight and still had the side cocking handle of the first pan. The third pattern that Vic and I examine here has the two position sight 
and it has the new grip cocking mechanism as seen in the Beezer. The fourth pattern prototype was very similar to the third, however it also introduced a selector switch on the left hand side of the pistol grip. In August 1942, BSA submitted the third pattern prototype for testing by the Army Ordnance Board, and it was extensively tested in September and November 1942. On the 6th of January 1943, BSA renamed the Beezel the Light Machine Gun Faulkner .303 inch Mark I. This was in order to avoid confusion with the 7.92mm Beezer tank machine gun. Final trials were held in March 1943, However, by now, the original purpose of the design was defunct, and the project was cancelled in June 1943, as production of the Bren gun had been significantly ramped up both at Enfield, at Lithgow in Australia, and at Inglis in Toronto, Canada. BSA produced approximately 20 prototypes of the various different patterns of Beazel during the development process. It's believed that only a handful of these remain today. It incorporated the Beazer uh, cocking mechanism and made some changes to the barrel and the way that the actual uh, barrel can be changed, which is completely different from how a Bren barrel comes Yeah, out. it's actually simpler than a Bren in that you um, you can remove the barrel a little bit easier. The uh, the lock for it is, uh, isn't as complex as the interrupted thread on a, on a Bren. Um, but let's take it apart and try and show you how, uh, how the system works on it. Strip the gun, working parts forward, take down pin, the uh, right of the rear sight pulled out, hinge the butt tape out, then pull down on this knurled knob here which releases the gas system and bolt. We now move the cocking handle, sorry the pistol it. grip to the front and then the bolt and gas assembly slide out as one piece. It looks initially a bit like a Bren gun uh, bolt and we'll do this in close-up but it works different. The it's, it's much more easy to machine, there's less complex angles in it, but it locks by a pin and a cam track pushing two locking lugs up into a machined locking recess in the top of the rear of the receiver. So it's much more simple than the Bren instead of having the whole thing machined and interchangeable locking pieces uh, it's just all one piece. Then we can pull the pistol grip out of the body of the gun and then rotate the takedown pin and pull the barrel off. At this point you can also take the bipod off which is, looks like a Bren gun bipod but it's not. It's, uh, it's not adjustable it's simply folded. It's fixed, yeah, but it, it's it's not even a Bren gun style design. The foot plate looks the same. And there's the receiver, which is mainly uh, stampings. Um, it's more complex than the Mark I. Looks like there's some reinforcement up here where the... Yeah, the locking lugs, the locking breech area is here, which is held in by eight rivets. So that's the only complex uh, machine part. But I would suspect it wasn't that serviceable uh, you couldn't replace that locking piece like you could on a Bren gun easily um, so it would be once it was out of spec that was it. So putting it back together bipod barrel oh, it. lock it in place take the bolt and gas assembly Slide it forward, locking piece in, trigger group in the track, slide it forward, unlock it so it slides forward a little bit better, put plate in place, lock it in, forward, cock and she's ready to go. So it's as easy as a Bren gun, possibly a little bit easier very rare gun only a few i would say a dozen or so manufactured but not seen in the wild at all i think we're the first people to take this apart in quite a while. in a long time the the owner of this uh, of this gun in fact uh, didn't really know much about it so we've uh, we've shown them and helped them understand what the gun is and how significant it is so it's been a real honor for us to uh, to get 
to see this one of only possibly a dozen yeah. that were ever manufactured possibly one of only one or two that's left uh, around so that's Vic Matt this is the uh, armorous bench please like share and subscribe and we'll see you guys later thanks for watching guys